Welcome to part 3 of the Open Coop build series. In this build series we'll be talking about the automatic grain bin system and the watering system. Be sure to check out our website opencoop.net where you can find the forum so we can share ideas and production methods and also access to the plans which it will be a downloadable PDF link. There's a couple reasons why we like to use a drop tube feed system over your typical and standard pan feed system for chickens. The first reason is that each drop tube feeder can be adjusted up or down individually from the rest, which is important because if you have sloping terrain, you might need one feeder in the front of the house to be higher or lower than the opposing end. For the most part, a pan feed system would have to be level across your whole length of whatever size building that you had. The pan feed system also would need to be attached to the grain bin, so if you need to raise or lower the system, everything would have to move, including the grain bin, which requires a little bit more engineering. The second reason we chose a drop tube feed system is that each feeder can hold 40 to 50 pounds. This way we can just turn on the feed system for about 10 minutes every day or even every other day when they're younger versus a chicken pan feed system has a very low volume amount of feed and has to run continuously 24 hours a day. This would require a really expensive solar setup with batteries and, and all that to be able to run all day every day. Since the drop tube system only needs to be turned on once or every other day, a generator can power all the houses at once and easily fill the system up. A much cheaper option. The first part of the auto grain system is to install the PVC auger pipes. Start on the back end or the end that's closest to the, where the motor will be and work your way towards the grain bin. There's also instructions that I'll include in the link for doing this as well. Drill a hole through the wood or whatever material you use on the outside sheathing of the wall and put a straight pipe and make sure that you put leave at least 12 inches coming out of the building. Then put a straight pipe on the end of the grain bin. Put a couple or piece on the straight pipe that comes out of the building and then take your two angled pieces and connect them together. I try to make these intersect as straight on as you can. Now obviously that's, you can see there's a slight angle right there and that's okay, that's, that's good enough, that will work. We have made that work plenty of times. Um, if you can get it straighter and the way that you would do that is in this particular case, you would need more length to come out of that building to get this a little bit more dead on straight. But we're gonna roll with that right there. So we're gonna cut this. We're gonna make a mark right here on this straight pipe and cut it right there and see if that fits on. And then if it does, we'll be good to go. We'll glue everything up and then we'll be on the next step. So once you dry fit your pieces and you get your angle correct going from the grain bin inside to the house and everything's fitting as square as you can get it, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can flex things a little bit to get them to fit in. Um, it will be fine. 
Make sure you mark your two angled pieces before you take them off and put them back together so you can line them back up to those lines. Otherwise, if I were to take this out and not have a mark, these two angles can work against each other and you can be way off when you go to put your glue in and then you're screwed. Make your lines or take this off, put glue on it, put it back in, and then this, this part will be glued and then we'll go on the inside and glue all those joints. Once you get your pipe glued and ready to go, we're going to attach the motor and suspend it from the top of the building with um, cable and cable clamps. And we're going to adjust that until that coupler piece lines up with the PVC. Once you have your pipe and glued up all the way to the motor, you're going to lay out your feeders. We like to use these cool branded 30 pound feeders and we attach a rope suspended from the feed line or from the truss up above. And we get these cord adjusters is what they're called and they have several holes in it. You might need to drill them out a little bit bigger to fit the size cord that you need. And then you're gonna take that rope or cord, you're gonna slide it through a, the top hole, come down, put it through the top of the feeder Come back around, put it through, loop it around, and then you're going to tie a knot. Now this cord adjuster allows you to quickly adjust the height of the feeder. And then you're going to drill holes right where each feeder is on the PVC feed line. And our instructions calls for drilling two, two and a half inch holes right beside each other with a hole saw bit to give enough space for the grain to fall out. I like to put the hole saw bit on uh, a chuck setting that has a little bit of resistance so when it binds it doesn't completely break your hand off. Then we're going to to attach the drop tube shutoffs. This comes with your drop tube kit. It's just a piece of string that uh, takes this piece of plastic and uh, closes and uncloses that hole that you've just drilled. Um, so this allows you to turn off a feeder for whatever reason that you might want. Once you get the shutoffs installed, you're going to add the actual drop tubes to the shutoff itself. You can see that we're going to drill a hole through the drop tube and through the shutoff, and then you're going to put a clip through those holes, and that's what holds your drop tube onto the shutoff. We didn't get a video of this process, but we like to use two different diameter drop tubes. One's cut in half and attached to the top with the clip and the other one just slides over that and that's so you can adjust your feeders up and down um, and then that tube will slide over but still hold all of the grain in. So now we're going to push the flex auger from the grain bin all the way until it gets to the motor and you're going to go ahead and attach it to the motor with the supplied hardware. I'm going to skip over the rest of the installation and that's only because hog slat has a really good installation video and I'll post that in the description. Next I'm going to install all the junction boxes and outlets for the grain, the motor and grain bin system. So I like to install a three-way junction box on top of the interior of the chicken house. So this is directly behind the motor. And I like to use 10-3 Romex wire is totally fine for the interior of the house. So I'm going to have one uh, strain of 10-3 going from the motor to the junction box, and then two going on either end 
of the house to electrical boxes. So again, I have two outlets on both sides of the houses. That way, if you want to add a house to your system, you have a way to connect each one to your generator. Um, you're going to have to figure out which type of outlet that you're going to need that will eventually sync up to your generator. Um, our generator had a 30 amp L1430 plug. So that's what we use for all of the male and female uh, outlets and plugs and cords. Uh, for our system. So we use PEX pipe as the main water supply within the house. A 100 foot roll of 3 quarter inch PEX will service the whole house and wrap around both sides. And then we use both ends that terminate on the outside of the building and we make it go from PEX to a garden hose quick attach. Um, and then we daisy chain each house to each other so that it can just have one central hook in to whatever water main water line system that you have on your farm and then that one hook in will then supply the rest of these houses. We use for around five to seven hundred birds about eight waters uh, and we use the Plazon branded bell drinkers. So we have a high density black plastic pipe that runs throughout the farm as our main water line that goes to our well. And then every 300 feet we have a Plazon brand quick connect and that goes into the black plastic line. And then we have a water hose with this key that quick connects into that, into that um, Plazon connection. And that water hose goes all the way to our chicken house, which we put a pressure reducer, which is also the Plazon brand. And that just helps us control the rate of flow into the houses those plazon bell drinker waters can't take but so much water pressure so that is how we fix that problem and you can see each house is just daisy chain from one to the other with quick connects and we also take down the electrical lines too now you're ready to fill up some grain bins and throw away those five gallon buckets we like to use a gravity wagon with a hydraulic powered auger you can usually find these used for several thousand dollars on facebook marketplace and we usually fill this the grain bins up once a week and we're good to go. We'd like to thank the Northeast SARE, the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education, for help sponsoring this project. Without their help, this open source video series would not be possible. Thank you and we hope you enjoy the video.